Hello and welcome to my retrospective on the Metroid series. I am so excited for Metroid Dread, which is actually out today if you're watching this video the day it went live. So in this video I'm not really going to go into what the games are actually about or the stories, there's plenty of videos online that cover that. Instead I'm going to focus almost exclusively on my personal experiences and my thoughts and opinions on each game. So I've got all the games that I could find in this house with me right now and I can't wait to tell you my journey through the Metroid series but first I want to tell you about a Metroid comic which is actually free right now so check the links down in the description below and check out this incredible comic that was half written by humans and AI. It's a really fascinating read and it's a really interesting way they went about making it. I'm really really excited to get into it so let's get started. The first Metroid game that I ever played personally was Metroid 2 for the original Game Boy. I'm sure a lot of you have played this game and it's kind of got mixed opinions online. I'm of the opinion that it is a really good game, but it is very difficult to go back to and play again today. I remember at the time when I got the game when I was a kid, I was very impressed by the atmosphere of it, although I had absolutely no idea what to actually do in the game. Metroid 2 is infamous for being the game that brought in the spider ball, and thanks to that spider ball, once you get it, you can literally go anywhere you want, and I remember just getting completely lost, going through all these caverns, sticking to the walls and the ceiling, trying to find my way around. Of course I've been back to it since and I have finished the game and I really do think it is a really good game and it really holds up to the test of time as well. I much, much prefer it over the original on the NES, I'll say that much at least. So I'd say it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in some of the older games in the Metroid series and I think you can actually get it on the Virtual Console for the 3DS as well so there's plenty of different ways to play this game and I definitely recommend it. Of course there was also the remake on the 3DS which I'll get to a bit later on in this video and from when I played Metroid 2 on the Game Boy there was a huge gap all the way up until Metroid Prime came out on the GameCube in 2002 <laughs> I never actually played Super Metroid on the SNES, even though today it's one of my favourite games in the series. I jumped straight from the Game Boy game all the way up to this game on the GameCube, and I'm sure Metroid Prime needs no introduction whatsoever. It's once again a masterclass in atmosphere and gameplay, and if anyone hasn't played it already, definitely go and play it because it's still one of the most well-made games, and it still holds up incredibly well. My personal favourite way of playing this game is the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii, so if you've got a Wii and you don't mind motion controls, I honestly do think the motion controls added a lot to this game, so I would definitely recommend going and getting the Prime Trilogy if you've got the choice, but even if you haven't, it's definitely worth going back and playing the GameCube original, or just emulate it on Dolphin and play it with 4K graphics, and it just looks incredible. I also found out recently that there's a mod for this as well on Dolphin, where you can actually play it in VR. So I'm going to try and get that working, and if I did, I'll cut to that now and let you know what I thought of it. Oh dear. Oh god, that doesn't look good. Can you see that? Yeah. I think it's because they're supposed to be... A... Ah! <laughs> Hello, Giant Samus. Okay, the cutscenes don't really work in VR. There you go, here's a good example of what, what you can do in VR. You can look around this room. Wow, in terms of the atmosphere though, that is really cool. To just see the game like this. Yeah, the cutscenes are weird where it pulls you out like that. That's <laughs> like going through things as well. Like that leaf just went through my head. Yeah, it is cool though. Like seeing Samus, like life size coming towards you. Yeah, if I could get the settings dialed in right and get it get it so that I can actually sit on the sofa rather than having to kneel in the middle of the room. It's really cool. Like even just being able to look around, like you can look up there and see there's the um light bulb. energy tank up there. No, that's a light bulb. An energy tank? I could reach up and grab it. Don't grab it, it's hot. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing other games like this as well. And there's actually a funny story for Metroid Prime as well. I loved this game so, so much back in the day. This, of course, as you can see, isn't my original copy. This is the player's choice copy. Because the original one, when it first came out, I couldn't actually afford to buy the game straight away. So instead, I would rent it from Blockbuster. And I actually rented it over and over again. I paid like the $5.99 for a week or whatever. For so many weeks on end that I'd literally just spend 
spent more renting it than actually buying the game itself. So I think after I'd rented it like five or six times, my dad just took me when the player's choice version was out and just let me let me have this as a gift. So thank you so much for that. And it is one of my favorite games of all time. And like I said, anyone who hasn't played it, definitely go and play it and see what all the fuss is about. And then after that, my second Metroid game, which came out right around the same time actually. And I think I got this one for either my birthday or for Christmas. This is Metroid Fusion and definitely one of my favourite games in the series. The only 2D Metroid game that I'd played up until this point was Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, so you can imagine my surprise at just how much better this game was compared to Metroid 2. I hadn't played Super Metroid, so I didn't really know that this game was kind of going back a little bit in terms of exploration, and it sort of split the game up into lots of smaller different environments, which I think works perfectly well for the handheld, and like I said, it's one of my favourite games in the series. I, I've played it many, many times over the years, both on the Game Boy and on the 3DS because I got the Ambassadors Edition so I could actually play this game on the 3DS and I remember playing it all the way through on there and I think it came out on the Wii U as well so once again loads of ways to play this game although I think it would have been really good for Nintendo to re-release them all on the Switch before Dread comes out so that people who are new to the series people that didn't play through all the games like I have they would at least have an option to play it on a modern Nintendo console they really did miss a trick there I think they could have made loads of money and the next game I'm going to come to is the NES game, which I haven't actually got here, but the way I played the NES game was actually by completing both of these games and then using the GameCube to Game Boy Advance link cable and actually connecting Metroid Fusion to Metroid Prime to unlock the NES game. I think you unlock it on Metroid Prime, so the first time I actually played it was on the GameCube, and let's just say it's very, very difficult to go back to. I'm sure if you've heard of Metroid on the NES before, you know how much of a sprawling adventure it is, but also how little handholding there is as well. I remember at the time I actually printed off a map. So without that guide, or I guess back in the day without a Nintendo Power magazine, you're pretty much screwed if you're going to try and find your way through Metroid 1 on your own, but it is a really good game. It definitely shows its age these days, and I don't think it's held up as well as Metroid 2, but I really do enjoy it for what it is, and I would love to go back one day and actually put the time and effort into trying to get through the game without using the guide. I think that would be really fun. Let me know in the comments what you think of Metroid 1. Do you think it's just too hard to go back to or do you really enjoy that classic NES experience of finding everything out on your own? Let me know in the comments. After Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion I was super super excited for Metroid Prime 2. And there's a really exciting story to go along with me getting Metroid Prime 2. I actually got to play it before it was released at a show called GameStars Live in London at the Excel Center. Nintendo had a booth there, it was called Nintendo Pier, and there is one video online on YouTube that actually showed this location off. So. I'm going to move over here a little bit so you can see what the event was like, I'll put it up there. But one of the games that Nintendo had at the show before it was actually released was Metroid Prime 2 and I got to play it both in single player and in multiplayer and I absolutely loved what I played. If I remember right in the same area as well they also had Zelda the Minish Cap for the GBA which is another one of my favourite games. So I think 2004 this came out, yeah. 2004 was a great year for Nintendo. That, that event as well I also got to play things like Animal Crossing, Donkey Konga, and I actually got to see a Nintendo DS before it was officially released as well. So amazing memories of playing Metroid Prime 2 before it came out. And when it did come out, of course, just like the original one, I absolutely loved it. And a funny story about both of the Metroid Prime games for the GameCube, because at the time I was at school and I wasn't really allowed to play games late at night or for that long in one sitting. The save stations in these games are kind of far apart and when you're exploring you don't exactly want to have to trek all the way back to a save point just in order to be able to turn the game off to go to bed or go to school or go down to eat lunch or whatever. So what I used to do with these two games is actually cover up the power LED on the top of the GameCube with a memory card and actually leave the game running while I went to school so that I could come back after school and finish off my my adventure so that is a really great memory of the GameCube in general but I especially remember doing that with these two games 
I also loved the multiplayer element that they introduced in Metroid Prime 2 as well. All my friends after school would come back and we would play that, and I also played it in college and at uni as well. And it is a really great mode, even though it's a little bit simple, but in terms of the main single player story, I think it stands right alongside Metroid Prime 1 as one of the best single player experiences in any Nintendo game. They really upped the atmosphere in the second one, and I just loved that. And then we go back to the GBA and the next game in the Metroid series, which was a much, much improved remake of Metroid 1 for the NES. Of course, this is Metroid Zero Mission. So I've been umming and ahhing about what my favourite Metroid game is over the past few days, and I think I've decided that it's Metroid Zero Mission. If anyone watching this hasn't played a Metroid game before, and you're interested in the series but you don't know which one to start with, I definitely recommend starting with Metroid Zero Mission. Not just because it's a retelling of the first game in the series, but also because I think it's the most polished, it's the easiest to get into, it's not even that long to play all the way through, even if you're not an expert. You can probably get through this in four or five hours with about 50 or 60 percent completion on your first try which I think is really good and it really suits the handheld format as well. And the next game I played was actually the demo that came with the original DS. This is Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt. And I remember first seeing this at E3 2003 I think when the DS was first being shown off and they showed off the demo for Metroid Prime Hunters and my mind, my 12 or 13 year old mind at the time was just completely blown away by what I saw coming out of the DS. Going from the 2D Metroid games on the GBA, although I absolutely loved them, they didn't look anything like Metroid Prime, which was, up until Metroid Zero Mission at least, my favourite game in the series. So when I saw Metroid Prime Hunters running on the DS in 3D, even though it's very different to what the final game became, that original demo just completely blew my mind and I'd never seen anything like it before. So when I found out that that demo was going to be a pack-in with the DS that came with the original system, I was so, so excited for the day one, and I must have played this demo over and over and over again. I played it non-stop when I got the DS. Between this and Mario 64 DS, I was just really, really having a great time. It still holds up quite well, and of course, the full game that came out a year after, I think? Two years after, actually. Wow, there was a two-year gap between these two. I just realised that, actually. So, back in the day, it was actually quite a long wait between First Hunt and when Metroid Prime Hunters actually came out. So, that's actually quite surprising. So, let me know if you were around at the time between these two releases. Let me know what you thought of the demo when you got the DS on launch day, if you did. And then let me know what you thought of Metroid Prime Hunters when it came out. Did it live up to all of your Metroid Prime expectations for a handheld? I honestly have to say absolutely 100% yes. This was an incredible game. It has a huge single player story mode where you're visiting multiple different planets and having to track down the hunters. It does get quite complicated later on. I think this is one of the more confusing layouts for a Metroid game because you're going between all of these different planets and Playing it on the handheld, dipping in and out of it, it can be quite easy to lose track of where you're meant to go next. But one of the things I really loved about this game was the online multiplayer. Nintendo really went all out with the online on this game, which is really surprising considering it came out in 2006, which at the time Nintendo hadn't really experimented with many multiplayer games online up until that point. The only other big one I can think of was Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart DS. But Metroid Prime Hunters, probably the best example of a Nintendo online game. It even had voice chat, which was just incredible for the time. Me and my friend Jack would play it all the time after school and we both really loved it. I actually kind of want to go back and play it again today, because I don't think this game really gets the love and attention that it deserves from the Metroid community. At least not what I've seen anyway. Maybe there's some fanatics about it online, so let me know if you're one of them. And now we're into the Wii era and I can't remember whether Metroid Prime 3 came out first or whether Super Metroid came out first on the virtual console but I'm pretty sure that I played both of them around the same time so I'll start with Metroid Prime 3. <laughs> 
And just like a lot of the other games in the series, my first memory of this game is seeing that incredible Wii launch demo thing at E3, where they went through and showed off loads of different games, and one of them was Prime 3, and they really over-exaggerated the Wii motion controls in that original trailer. Just take a look at how over the top this is. Of course, the final game is nowhere near that involved, but it is a great game. It's a lot more action focused than the first two, which I actually quite enjoyed as a bit of a change of pace. One thing I didn't like so much was all of the different story cutscenes, because I really liked how sort of empty the first two were in a good way. It really made it feel like you were just on your own going through these different caverns in the first two games, whereas this one, you're introduced to all of the colony people and stuff and you keep meeting back up. It's a little bit different in that sense. It kind of feels a bit more like a Star Fox game, in a way. But I did really enjoy the game, of course. I picked it up on launch day, I played it all the way through to completion. Really, really enjoyed what I played of it. And of course, like I said before, the best way of playing all of the Metroid games, with all of the improvements that they made in Metroid Prime 3 these days, is to play the Metroid Prime Trilogy. I believe you can also download it on the Wii U as well, so although this version here is quite expensive, it's definitely worth tracking down if you can, but if you can't get hold of it, you can download it on the Wii U and play it that way. I definitely recommend playing it with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, it just feels so good. And I guess that brings me on to Super Metroid, which I haven't got here unfortunately to show you because I'm sure you're sick of me talking about this now, but I am moving house very soon, so a lot of the games that I want to talk about on YouTube at the minute are really can't just because they're not here but at least I can tell you my experiences with the game so the first time I ever played it was on the Wii Virtual Console and I was really excited to download it because of course up until this point I'd played loads of other Metroid games and there wasn't a single bad game amongst them and I'd heard great things about Super Metroid in fact I'd actually heard people saying that it was better than all of the other games that I played so I was so so excited I remember I downloaded it onto the Wii Virtual Console got the Virtual Console classic controller which is a great controller at the time it mimicked the SNES controller so it felt perfect for the game and I absolutely fell in love with Super Metroid just it was just unrivaled in how well made the game was like the GBA games are good but Super Metroid for me was just a step above them it didn't just become one of my favourite Metroid games, it actually became one of my favourite games of all time. I absolutely loved it to pieces. At the time, there wasn't a single thing that I could think was wrong with it. The level designs were just absolutely masterclasses in design. The way you backtrack through the world and you go to all of these different locations, the way the really atmospheric music plays as you're moving through these different areas as well, all of the different upgrades and pickups that you get along the way, the way the game teaches you about how to use some of these special abilities, although it didn't really teach me because I'd already seen other people play Super Metroid at the time, so I already knew things like the Shine Spark and the Wall Jump, but I can see how for people when they played it on the SNES, it would have just been so amazing to work out these things on your own. But yeah, I absolutely love Super Metroid. I remember I used to take it over to my nan's, the Wii, because she had a bigger TV, and I would plug it in there and play it in her living room, and she would watch, and just, I just absolutely loved everything about it. These days, I think you can play it on the Switch, so there's no excuse not to give it a go, and although it's a little bit more clunky than some of the GBA games that came after it, I still really do enjoy it, and I would definitely recommend it to everyone. And I can see why there was such a big gap between Super Metroid on the SNES, and Metroid Prime on the GameCube. There was like a 10 year gap between them. I don't think they could really think of a way of improving Super Metroid. It was just so good. They kind of dug themselves into a hole as to where to take the series next. And now we're kind of getting towards the end of the series. Of course, there was Metroid Other M, and although a lot of people don't really like this game, I did enjoy it at the time, aside from the stupid cutscenes that I'm sure everyone can agree upon, that they are just absolutely terrible, and they should have been either completely wiped or completely changed altogether to just... Samus didn't really seem like herself in that game. It was all just really weird. But I do just want to show this off, because I think this is really cool. So I picked this up while I was in Japan at the start of last year, just before the pandemic hit and look how cool this box is so you've got like this plastic this cardboard sleeve here and when you lift it up you've got Samus on the front and back like that and the way you actually slide it over the box it's actually like she's putting the suit on so I just thought that was so so cool so you've got it on that side there with her regular face and then you've kind of got it with a, a green sort of overlay on the other side so it goes in like that so I just think that's 
absolutely awesome and I'm so so happy to have this special edition and I also want to say don't be put off by what you've seen online about Metroid Other M. It actually plays a lot better than people give it credit for. Although it only uses the Wii Remote and it's not the most comfy controller in the world, I think what they actually did with the game, kind of taking a mix of the 2D and 3D Metroid series and sort of jamming them together into one brand new gameplay style, I think they actually pulled it off really well and it's definitely one of the most unique games in the series, although it is a little bit short, a little bit easy, and it's also kind of missing the whole exploration thing that some of the other games had. It's still definitely worth checking out and it's not as bad as people say it is, honestly. A game that unfortunately is as bad as people say it is and I'm really not going to get into it very much in this video. This is Federation Force and at the time it had already been a long gap between Other M and Federation Force and the reception to this game wasn't great so really at the time the last good Metroid game had come out in 2007 so the gap between that and 2016, so a nine year gap between that and when this one was announced, you can see why people were upset about it. Like, the game itself is okay and it's actually really fun in multiplayer, but it's just not what people wanted from the series. I feel like if Samus Returns had come out before Federation Force, so if they'd swapped the release order for these two, then people would have been a lot more receptive to it. But that brings us on to the latest game in the series, and unfortunately my least favourite as well. This is Samus Returns for the 3DS, made by Mercury Steam, the same people who made the Castlevania game for the 3DS before it, which also I didn't like compared to the other Castlevania games, but I'll save that for another day. This game is okay, I guess. I mean, they did a lot to improve the Game Boy 1. They, like, they streamlined a lot of things, they improved the map system. I would say they improved the controls, but I actually don't really like how you've got more aiming in this game. It kind of feels like there's a bit too much to think about in terms of the controls, and I really don't like the close-up grapple fighting either. It's It kind of slows the game down a lot, and also all of the game looks really dark and grimy, which when you compare it to something like Zero Mission or Fusion, which are really bright and colourful, this felt like a step back in several ways, but maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on it, because at the time the Switch had already come out and I'd kind of moved on from the 3DS, so maybe I should go back and play it again. It's actually the only 3DS game that I've actually still got in this house I actually left it out specifically there you go there's the 3DS cart I actually left it out specifically because I wanted to try and play it through to completion before Metroid Dread came out and so that brings us up to today and the release I've got it right here of Metroid Dread it turned up just now and I'm gonna unbox it on camera and tell you guys why I'm so excited for this game so I'm sure some of you might already know but this game Metroid Dread was actually first revealed as a game title way back in 2004 or 5 when it used to pop up in Nintendo magazines and on rumor websites and stuff so literally for about 15 plus years now I've been reading about Metroid Dread I've been dreaming up what it might become so I am so so excited as soon as this video has gone live as soon as I'm finished work which I'm meant to be doing right now actually but this just came through and I had to include this in the video so I will be playing this non-stop after I finished work today so there's the front cover of the special edition and inside it looks like we got a steel book and I believe that is the art book as well so and of course I did also get the special edition of Samus Returns but unfortunately I don't have it here but this is really cool to have so here's what the steel book looks like and here's what it looks like on the inside really nice artwork there and this next thing here oh this isn't the art book these are actually some sort of cards that came with it so we've got one for the original Metroid really nice and shiny we've got one for Metroid 2, very nice. We've got one for Super Metroid. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but I really like them. There's a nice blue one there for Metroid Fusion. I like the fact that they match the colours with the games. And then we have a silver one there for Metroid Dread. Oh man, I'm so excited for this game. And talking about the game, here's the actual game itself, Metroid Dread. So let's have a look and see whether they've done anything interesting on the inside. Ah, uh, that's a bit disappointing. Even though this was an expensive special edition, it doesn't actually have an instruction manual or anything. It just has that little warning leaflets thing. But there's the inside of the box, really nice bit of artwork in there. And the cartridge, of course. Okay, here's the thing I was really excited about with this. Huge Metroid art book. Look how cool that is. So let's get this opened up and have a look. So the, the subtitle under the title there is Mission Logs. So let's have a quick look at what's inside. I won't have time to do any alternate camera angles or anything, so I'll try and come over here and show you. Wow, that is really nice. There's the original Famicom artwork for the game. 
let's have a quick flick through. I won't spoil all of it. There's like concept art for different items and enemies in the games. There's Metroid 2. I love that picture of Samus from Metroid 2. That's one of my favourites. Let's skip forward a bit. Let's see what else we got in here. So it looks like the first part of that book is about the previous games and then the next part, if you can see there, is concept art from Dread itself. So I wonder how much of this is actually from when they first came up with the idea of Dread from back in 2004 or 5. That's really cool to see though. It'd be really good if there were some interviews and stuff in here because I think this game will have had a really fascinating um, development cycle. That's cool to see. There's some storyboards for the cutscenes. Wow, yeah, really nice book. There's also some artwork of all the different areas that you'll go to in the game. So now I'll pass the video back to myself from a few days ago, and I can't wait to go and play this after work. Only a few hours to go. And before I finish this video, I am doing a giveaway of Monkey Ball Banana Mania for the Switch, which of course I did the review on last week. All you need to do is go and watch the Monkey Ball review, leave a comment on there and subscribe to the channel. And in a few weeks time, I'm gonna put everyone's names in that video into a random name generator and pick out a winner and send this game over to you. So that is my journey through the Metroid series. Let me know down in the comments your journey through the series. Let me know whether it was similar or different to mine. Let me know what your favorite game in the series was and I really hope everyone enjoys Metroid Dread. I am so so excited for it. I'm actually probably playing it right now by the time this video goes live. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next week for the next episode. Goodbye!